Welcome back. And now let's look at a few case studies related to the International Accounting Standards Number 2 inventories. The first case study, let's see, it's the two marks question. And what we're trying to do is going to write two sentences related to uh, the, the, the requirement. So normally, will be uh, two long sentences would be fine. Let's see then. The local government organisation supplement its income, which means to uh, increase the income, by buying and selling property. This is usually done by lots of governments nowadays across the world. The housing department is one of the departments in that local government regularly sells parts of its housing inventory in the ordinary course of its operations as a result of changing demographics. Okay, which means the housing department sells those houses, those houses may be accounted for as inventories if it meets with the substance over form concept and here the form is to sell it and the substance regularly sells it and of course it should be accounted for as inventories according to the eyes number two we made the first point parts of the inventory which is not held for sale okay if the inventory is not holding it it is not holding for resale purposes, it's highly likely that inventory should be accounted for as PPE, property plant equipment, according to the IAS number 16. But here, part of inventory is not held for sale, is to provide housing to low income employees at below market rental. Okay, so we are charging those low income employees in our business or in the, lo in, in the local government but the rent is below the market rate. So here it seems that we are holding or our business or the local government or the housing department is holding those houses for rental purposes and in this case it seems to me according to the IAS number 40 investment property if you are holding that property not to be used in your business or not for resale purposes but you are holding it for rental purposes or for capital gain purposes you're going to account for those houses under the eyes number 40 investment property but here's the thing first of all you are providing those houses to the employee, not to the external third party. And second, the rate is below the market rental, which means you like to get your income, not mainly in the form of market rental, not in the form of rental expenses or rental income or rental expenses paid by the low income employees, but uh, you are really holding those property to be used in your housing department to satisfy the needs of the low income employees and from this perspective you are not really realizing your property uh, in the form of uh, rental income not mainly in the form of rental income but uh, you are realizing the value of the property mainly to satisfy the needs of different stakeholders up below the market rent. In this case, I would rather classify these properties under the IAS number 16 property plant equipment, okay, rather than as the IS40 investment property. So, here's the thing. In the exam, it's quite important to understand the uh, techniques that we're going to use in writing out our answer. So first of all, because the conclusion is the IS number 16, can we write IAS number 40? Well, the answer is yes. You can demonstrate how you can think uh, about the question. So for example, parts of inventory and the IS2 inventories, and parts of inventories seems to be investment property, but conditions are not met. And finally, your conclusion will be the IS number 16 PPE. And of course, 
because it's only two marks question, you only need two point instead of being three point. But whichever points they're going to choose, you can earn the full marks in the exam. Only two would be enough. Let's now look at another question. Uh, it's the internal POC. It's the two marks question. What we can do is to write two point. Internal POC receives lots of certificate from the government for free, which can be sold to other companies. So we are gaining these certificates and for resale purposes. In this case, according to the substance over form concept, we haven't been told any other clues about those certificates at all. In this case, we should account for these certificates as inventories. No problem for that whatsoever, according to the IAS number two. But here's the thing, because we said in our previous section that we account for the inventories, for example, the initial measurement, we should use the historical cost method, which means the initial purchase price and also some of the commercial costs that we actually incurred but in this case, we obtained those certificates free of charge. We haven't incurred a single penny for that. So how can we account for it? In this case, because those certificates are given by the government, in this case, we can account for it under the next accounting standard, IAS number 20 government grant, which means we receive those certificates according to IS number 20. We should debit purchases or here make it clear inventories and credits to increase the deferred income liability because we haven't sold those uh, certificates yet. In this case, by how much? Well, according to IAS number 20, it gives us a choice. According to IAS number 20, we can use a notional amount or the fair value okay, onto, on, onto those inventories. Notional amount, which means $1, or fair value, we can engage an external expert to provide a fair value on those certificates. But it simply be a choice by the entity. We can either use the notional amount or the fair value. So in this case, for simplicity reasons, I'm going to use $1 as the notional amount for those inventories. Because it's only two marks question, and if your answer uh, touches the account achievement related to ICE number two inventories at the same time to recognize a deferred income liability, and this should be fine. Okay? you can gain the full marks. But I'm going to draw a big picture for that for you. So in this case, because we received a certificate with debit inventories worth of $1, and we credit deferred income liability worth of $1. But subsequently, of course, at the reporting date, not sold yet, but if they are sold, how we can account for it? Well, on sale of certificate, which means if they are sold, we're going to charge the expense into the cost of sales and to reduce the value of inventories by $1. At the same time, we've been recognising the revenue by crediting the sales revenue. Let's say uh, we sell those certificates, each part would be $100. And we recognise the account receivables or cash worth $100 and automatically you can see that we take the sales revenue and minus the cost of sales it can give us the gross profit worth of 99 in our P&L or statement of profit or loss. At the same time how can we deal with the deferred income liability? Well on sale of the certificate we should recognize the deferred income liability and to remove it as the income and to recognize the income so how can we do it because initially we credit deferred income liability to increase it up by one dollar and when we sold it we debit 
deferred income liability by one dollar, and we put that as a gain in our PL by one dollar. So essentially what that means is the government gives you a free of charge certificate. But free of charge certificate of that one dollar for that other income or gain, when can you recognize it? Well, it is when you sold it. When you sold it, you can see that because we've got the free of charge certificate worth one dollar, we can recognize it as the gain in our PNL. So that's all you can do. Okay, now let's look at the final case study. Uh, it's the company called Field Company. Uh, we've got the requirements worth of seven marks, and we need to make, for example, seven points for that. So, Field Company is a coal mining company and sells coal on the spot and futures market. So, spot market uh, means if I want to sell it, I can sell it. It can be delivered immediately, which means the current market. The futures market, and here we call it as the forward market, is for future delivery, which means we make the promise that we, we will sell those coal at some point in the future, and it can only be delivered at some point in the future. The image is divided into different grades of coal, Okay, according to ICE number two images, that we've got different categories of images with uh, perhaps uh, different nature or characteristics for that. One of the categories included in images at 30th November 2006. So at this date is the reporting date. It's the coal with a low carbon content, which is of a low quality. Wow. Well, the inventory seems to be at a low quality, which means it should be valued at the lower of costs and net realizable value. And in this case, perhaps the NRV is slightly lower than costs, which means the impairment of inventory is needed. Field will not process this low quality coal until all other coal has been extracted from the mine. It's the industry nature which is likely to be in three years' time. So in other words, for those low carbon content coals, they may suffer a loss. But whether these coals can be sold, it would depend on uh, time in three years' time. So which means it depends on the future's conditions. And if that's the case, we're going to be questioning uh, the, the contract, whether it would be executed or not. Because if the contract is an onerous contract, which means a loss-making contract, according to the IAS numbers 37, provisions, contingent liabilities and contingent asset accounting treatment, it should be accounted for as an onerous contract uh, by recognising a provision liability. So moving on. Based on the market information, the FIU has calculated a three-year forecast price of coal would be 20% lower than the current spot price. Because we got inventories on our statement of financial position, which means the lower quality coals, and when we are determining the net realizable value for those coals, and can we use the best estimate by considering the future prices of inventories into today's terms to determine the current NRV at the reporting date. But the answer is yes, you can use this information which means 20% off as the estimated selling price in determining the current net realizable value. No problem for that whatsoever. So the, the question number one, whether conceptual framework affects valuation of inventories and second how to calculate the NRV, including the low quality coal, which means apply your answer to the case specifically. Okay, so let me provide you with my answer. I'm going to write it in bullet points, but don't do it in the exam. You have to write it in full sentences, okay, to field company. So seven marks, I'm going to make seven points for that. So the first requirement 
is referring back to the conceptual framework, affecting the value of the inventory. Well, the answer is yes. Because first of all, according to IAS number two, the inventories should be valued at the lower of cost and net realizable value or NRV. In this case, according to a conceptual framework, the cost would be the historical cost. And the NRV, according to the conceptual framework, according to its measurement basis, is the current value. So in this case, um, yes, see, you can use the historical cost, you can use current value, but depending on which value is lower. And of course, if you forget about the number of the accounting standards, you can simply say per IFRS inventories. It will be absolutely fine, no problem for that whatsoever. Okay, but no worries, because later on in our course, we will repeat the accounting standards, including its number, again and again, and hopefully you can remember them, okay, when you go to the exam hall. Right, so which means, yes, it can affect the value of inventories because it, you, uh, in some circumstance, uh, you recognize the uh, value for, 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 of inventories at historical cost and sometimes at current, at current value. Yes, no problem for that. So that's the number one that so we can talk about. Second, the transaction involves the futures contract for those inventories. And in this case, perhaps according to the IFRS number nine, financial asset, particularly if you've got any derivatives, for example, the futures contract, to hedge against the prices, uh, the, the raw material prices uh, of your commodity. And if that's the case, it may be designated as the fair value through profit or loss or the FVTPO, okay, financial instrument. And of course, uh, the current value will come into being and should be taken into account when determining the value of that financial asset. And of course, it can affect the value of those items. And third, in addition to this inventory, perhaps the contract for those low quality uh, coals it may meet the definition of the onerous contract according to the IAS number 37, provision accounting, or you can say uh, provision contingent liabilities and contingent asset. It may meet the definition of the onerous contract And if there's an onerous contract, uh, what we have to do is to determine uh, how much they're going to debit the expense and credit the provision liability. In this case, according to the ICE number 37, the value should be the lower of the cost to fulfill the contract and the cost to terminate the contract. So for example, if the cost of fulfilling the contract is $100, the cost of terminating a contract, which means the penalty expenses that you're going to pay for, is to be $120. I'm going to choose $100 to execute the contract by recognizing the corresponding expense as well as the liability. In other words, the conceptual, requirement, conceptual framework requirements 
in relation to the element, which element uh, that we're going to recognize in our financial statement really affect our financial statement. And that's the reason why we have to take them into account. Okay? So after we finish the conceptual framework requirements, the number one, and second, we're going to be telling our examiner how we're going to calculate the NRV. The first point I'm going to make is the traditional NRV calculation or the normal NRV calculation is the way that NRV is calculated by taking the estimated selling price minus the estimated cost to complete and sell those inventories. And of course, you can make that clear to the examiner that you are absolutely familiar with the determination of the estimated selling price. And here, the estimated selling price is according to ICE number two, inventories. It should never be according to the IFAS number 13, fair value measurement. Because that's different, absolutely different. Because we'll have to also consider the strategic aspects in our business when determining uh, what will be the selling price that we're going to sell those items to other parties. This is quite important, you made that clear. And also the estimated cost to complete and sell, you can give some examples of estimated costs. So for example you can say that the repair expense the commission expense and these are the examples of estimated costs that you can comment on in your answer no problem for that whatsoever and finally going back to the case especially for those uh, low quality calls, the determination of NRV will involve the estimation of the futures prices, so probably in three years time. And that's why the 20% of the market price can be included or can be considered in the estimated price at the current reporting date or at 30th November 26. No problem for that. If you make those seven points, absolutely you can obtain 100% marks in the exam. And, uh, but this requirement for me is a bit tough particularly for the requirements number one. Uh, make sure that you score, for example, seven marks here. Um, if you can score four marks or more, and that will be fine. And let's have a look at the summary okay, of the eyes number two. Because in this particular paper, this standard would not be tested at a low level, but it would be tested at a higher level uh, of, the, of your studies. Um, first of all, when considering the ICE number two, you can cause reference to other accounting standards, for example the ICE number eight, related to accounting policies and estimate. If there's a change in cost method, it's a change in accounting policy. You have to uh, apply the retrospective adjusting method, which means you're going to go back to your uh, previous years financial statements and apply the latest accounting policy on that. But if that's a change in NRV, net realizable value, it's just to be a change in accounting estimate. What you can do is to cheat it as the prospective adjustment, which means you're not going, going back to your previous year's financial statement and change your values because you're looking onwards, not looking backwards. Looking forward, not looking back. The second accounting standard is the ICE number 10 in rent after the reporting period.
because if the image is has been damaged between the year end up to the financial statement being issued, which means after the reporting period, which means after the end of the current year, the event could be classified as either adjusting or non-adjusting event. And of course, if the image is being damaged in this particular period, 9 out of 10, it would be the adjusting event, which means you have to debit the cost of sales and credit inventories by recognising the impairment of, of those inventories. But of course, if some of the natural disasters taken place during that period, and it would be the non-adjusting event. And a simple disclosure including the nature of the event and the amount affected would be needed in the current year's financial statement disclosure note. But no worries, we'll be touching or going through the ICE number 10 later on in our course. For the ICE number 2 inventories, some of the conceptual framework requirements that you can apply in your answer, including the substance over form that we touched about that uh, before, the prudence concept, which means the impairment for those inventories, accruals concept, which means for those unsold inventories, we should remove the costs of the unsold inventories from our cost of sales to match the sold inventory selling price with the sold inventory's cost to give us profit. And finally, the consistency concept, uh, which means if you decide to apply the FIFO for your cost from this particular accounting period, it should be consistently applied in the later accounting period. Of course, a change of the accounting policy requires retrospective adjusting method uh, by uh, using the latest accounting policy to re-prepare your previous year's financial statement. If uh, that's uh, not consistent, you should make it to be comparable. Okay? But uh, very importantly, for the inventory categories have similar nature and characteristic, you have to apply the consistency concept, which means the uh, same accounting policy should be used for each category of inventories. Okay? So very, very important for that, that we touched about that uh, previously in the last section already. Okay. That's the end of the IS number two inventories in this paper. And these are the sort of stuff, from my perspective, that you're required to know in the, uh, in the exam. So, looking forward to seeing you in the next of our session. And bye for now. APC, accounting for your future.